The Web from 1947 was an excellent crime film starring a number of my favorite actors from long ago. Edmund O'Brien, William Bendix, and even Vincent Price. It's a great crime story, it's got plenty of twists and turns, and great acting, and I really enjoyed discovering this old film. Well, the film opens up, we're at a train station where this old fellow arrives, actor Fritz Lieber. He meets with his daughter, Martha, actress Maria Palmer. Now, apparently he's fresh out of prison, and he's expecting to meet somebody different there at the train station, but we don't know who just yet. Now, these two characters will be a little more important later in the film. Now, they leave, but they're followed by a shady-looking fellow. Well, we cut to our hero of the story, Edmund O'Brien's character, Robert Regan. Now, he's an attorney, and he shows up at this busy office building to meet with a Mr. Colby. But everyone's rude to him and they're all really busy, so he just has to force his way into an office room to meet with this Mr. Colby, who we find at a conference table. And he's played by none other than Vincent Price. And Regan tells him he's gonna be served with papers unless he pays for damages to his client, Emilio Canipa and his damaged banana cart. And that gets chuckles from all the people around the boardroom, but Colby's good with it, he agrees to pay. Regan leaves but not before flirting with Colby's secretary, Noel. She's played by the lovely actress, Ella Raines, who to me, I thought had a sultry Lauren Bacall vibe to her in this movie. She's a great actress. Well, later that night, Colby, who seems like he's a scheming creep, he has a fiendish plan, and he invites Regan to his home that evening, and Regan shows up, is greeted at the door by Charles, who's played by actor John Abbott, and once inside, he meets with Noel, for more flirty chat over booze before meeting with Colby for a game of pool. Now it's here that Colby shares that Croner, you know, the old guy from the beginning, blames him for his imprisonment and that he has threatened his life. And he offers Regan $5,000 to just act as his bodyguard before he leaves for Paris in two weeks. Regan accepts this offer and takes a gun from the cabinet of guns that Colby has. I don't know, that's a little suspicious there, buddy, but Regan goes to the police department to speak with a Lieutenant Damico to request a gun permit. The Lieutenant is played by William Bendix, and he is an amazing actor. He's been in several films I've reviewed, notably Hitchcock's film Lifeboat. Well, as a Lieutenant, he's not too fond of Regan getting a gun, but since he's like an old family friend or something, he does the favor reluctantly. Well, later that night, Regan is doing the bodyguard thing, and after checking the house and making sure everything's good, he cozies up with Noel, but before they can start dancing, there's the sound of a shot fired, and he runs upstairs to see Colby, who is apparently about to be shot by Kroner. Regan shoots him dead, and the next thing you know, everyone is there in front of the police telling their story, and Lieutenant Damico talks to Regan later, and he seems really suspicious of what's happened, but all seems to be resolved for now. So we cut to Colby and Noel, and they're getting cozy over drinks when Regan shows up. He gets his check for $5,000, and then steps down from the bodyguard role. Incidentally, I love hearing about dollar amounts in old films, because I wonder, you know, what would that be today? So after doing a little research, for those wondering, I looked it up, and five grand back then would be about $60,000 today. So, you know, not a bad day's worth there, Regan, for killing somebody. Well, Regan and Noel are going out for dinner, which is... Weird, as she's apparently Colby's girlfriend, but however, I can see that Colby is still just a little shaken up by the shooting and the detective's response, so I think he's just using her to dig for more information from him. Hmm, sneaky fellow. Well, they have dinner while the piano plays, and it's kind of a cold conversation as Regan is suspicious of Noel's intentions and whatnot, but by the end of the date, things seem a little more warm. He brings her home, and there's Colby right behind them, she calls it a night, and Regan and Colby play poker, and there's some clever dialogue as Regan shares the detective's ideas about Colby's schemes to get a man murdered and a patsy, basically him, framed. Now, watching this film, I really love seeing Vincent Price play this kind of cocky, rich character who keeps his cool the entire time, even though he's the one behind all these diabolical schemes. It's really a great scene watching the dialogue between the two of them. So later, Regan heads home, but uh-oh, there's Kroner's daughter waiting for him with a gun in her hand. She's angry that he killed her dad. Now, Regan grabs a gun, but is sympathetic as she cries, and he listens to her as she proceeds to tell him all about the man that he just killed, and how he was just a sweet old man that never would have had a gun. 
and that it was just a setup. Hmm. Well, the jarring music tells us that Regan is starting to become convicted that he might have done something wrong here. So Regan meets with Lieutenant Damico at the smoky Italian bookstore. It's really an interesting setting, actually, where the detective is sitting there playing chess. The whole room is, like, filled with smoke. <laughs> and uh, Regan opens up, you know, realizing he's been played as a patsy and he wants to work with this lieutenant. Now, Regan is on the inside, and he knows he kind of has that advantage, but there's really no way he can get off this murder hook without somehow getting Colby to confess to the whole setup. And the lieutenant seems unwilling to really help, and Regan is just left basically saying, you know, thanks for nothing, as he's in quite a pickle here. It's a clever film, and I like these noir plots, where so many of them, there's a good guy who's thrown into a bad situation that he has to dig himself out of. But Regan isn't giving up, and while researching old newspaper articles on Kroner, remember the old guy that he shot, and the counterfeiting charges on him, he heads out to interview James Nolan, played by actor Howlin Chamberlain. He was the reporter who originally covered the case, buys the guy some milk for his ulcers, <laughs> and then they sit to talk, so Regan can try to find some angles, possibly not reported in the story. Kroner gives him a lead, that a missing engraver named Victor Bruno may have counterfeited the bonds. So Regan pursues that lead and meets with Noel in the park to find out more about Bruno. Now later, Regan meets with Colby and tricks him into revealing more about Bruno by making up a story about a man being outside who suspiciously looked like this Bruno character kind of met his description. Now Noel is angry with Regan though for feeling like she's been played by him to get more information on Bruno. So the next day, Regan has his friend from earlier, the character Emilio, played by Tito Vuolo. He's an actor I know I've seen in other films. He was in The Bishop's Wife with Cary Grant. I did a review of that earlier. But anyhow, he gets this guy to pretend to be Bruno on the phone in order to blackmail Colby. Colby seems to take the bait on the phone, but as we find out after the call, he doesn't really buy it, and he's suspicious of Regan and now Noel because Da -da -dum. We find out that Colby had actually killed Bruno five years ago. Uh-oh. So the gig is up, but what will happen? Now, there's still a good 15 minutes left of the film here, so I don't want to give away the ending, but I really loved how it wrapped up. Because basically, everyone's trying to double-cross each other, and it all kind of builds up to this epic conclusion. And, you know, the story and the acting were just amazing in this film. I loved all the classic crime twists and turns, that led up to the big conclusion. And there's even a really fun little twist right at the end of the film. Some quick closing thoughts. You know, this was a great crime film with a number of big names in it. I, I think Edmund O'Brien is an amazing staple to any old crime film. You know, he's just got this everyman believability to him, you know? I wouldn't consider him to have that, you know, Cary Grant suaveness. He seems like someone you could just hang out with, shoot some pool, and he's just perfect here at this protagonist character falsely accused, trying to clear his name. I really loved him in the film DOA. That's another film I've reviewed before, and that one was exceptional. The dialogue for his character is quick and witty, and I thought he had a really nice chemistry with actress Ella Raines. She's lovely, she's just as sharp, and while initially she feels betrayed and used by Regan, she does come around to see Colby for the creep that he is, and does sort of side with Regan in this film. And, you know, again, I thought the two had a nice chemistry together. And, of course, I love seeing Vincent Price in any film, honestly. And I love the range of characters he plays. You know, he's not always just this mad ghoul or creepy scientist. But here, he's just a scheming businessman. And watching how he keeps his cool about everything, even when being interrogated, he just casually talks about everything, even when he's scheming murders. It's just amazing. He's a great actor here. And finally, William Bendix as Lieutenant Damico was fantastic. I, I've seen him in many other films like Streets of Laredo and Submarine Command. And truth be told, one of my favorite things from these old crime noir films, among other things, is when they have the, you know, the hard-edged, jaded detective. And he just nails the role here. Really enjoyed it. Doing some research, I honestly couldn't find much in terms of trivia. But it's interesting that in 1947, Lux Radio Theater broadcast a radio version of this story starring Vincent Price and Ella Raines. Ah, the days when you could take a film and then turn it into a radio broadcast. Well, anyhow, the writing here was 
crisp and sharp, the plot was engaging, and I loved all the acting. The Web from 1947 was an excellent crime noir film, and it's definitely one worth checking out.